Hey guys, what's up? This is Alex. So today I want to share with you what I believe to be arguably the most important pasta dish of all Italian cuisine. Nothing short. And in my opinion, it's also the key to understand the whole sauce slash uh, pasta situation. I mean, more on this later, but for the moment, please welcome Caccio e Pepe. Caccio what? Caccio e pepe. Caccio pepe. Uh, uh, it's the Italian name. It stands for cheese and pepper pasta. Like what? Like grated cheese? Yes. And pepper like, like black pepper? Yes. It's a lot to take in, to be honest. It's uh... That's exactly how I felt about this dish before actually making it. Because that dish only is apparently simple. It's very tricky to master. But if you manage to do it, I can promise two things. One, you'll get an absolutely exquisite experience, like something really luxurious. Oh la la! And two, the technique you're gonna learn within this recipe simply is a game changer and also a keeper. Well, it's probably better if I show you what like a great and amazing cacio e pepe looks like. No, this is not cacio e pepe. No, 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 no sense. Mm, not good. Ah, this. You see that silky, smooth creaminess in between all the layers of pasta. Okay, let's do it. Despite being very specific, extremely specific, I mean, it's an Italian recipe, uh, the list of ingredients is super frugal. Pasta, those are called peachy, you can also go for Tonarelli. Anyways, you just want to go for, you know, thick spaghetti cheese. This is pecorino cheese, so cheese made with sheep's milk. If you want to go with parmigiano or parmesan cheese instead, you can. However, you might miss on the funkiness of that cheese, on the absolutely exquisite pairing with the next ingredient, black pepper. So it's quite a common ingredient, but you want to make sure that you're using freshly ground black pepper, there sure is a difference. And also that you're not using it as a seasoning, but you know, as an integral part or flavor of this dish. Three ingredients, the recipe is that frugal. Five, to be honest, because you also need to consider water and salt. Those are ingredients, let's not. Take a look at the ingredients. Try to remember the picture on screen. Good. What is wrong? There is something wrong. Hmm? Nothing is, is, is striking to you? Do you see butter? Do you see olive oil? Do you see eggs? Cream? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, get the sheep flavor. It's not bad, it's just... Yes, thank you! How are we supposed to get that silky creaminess? Where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from somewhere. Well, as always, when feeling in doubt, let's head straight to the fridge. I don't mean like, let's stuff our faces. Let's just, you know, break down the science behind all this. So in a nutshell, the uh, cacio pepe recipe is basically asking you the impossible. It's asking you to square the circle. It's asking you to mix melted cheese, so fat, and water and to turn the whole thing into a cream, which is a big problem, because as everybody knows, oil or fat and water don't mix. And you know that if you've been making a salad dressing before, that previous statement is both true and false at the same time. True, because if you were to mix up even very vigorously oil and vinegar, then they would split eventually, but inevitably, with the water sinking to the bottom and the oil floating on top. But I guess also false since that same mixture of vinegar and oil can be made stable using an emulsifier like mustard, for example. Does this mean that I'm gonna be using mustard in cacio e pepe and just <laughs> watch the whole comment section being trampled down by angry Italian people? No. Luckily for us, there is another way to stabilize an emulsion using a thickener. The thickening. The thickening! It's a... In our case, starch. Quick self-promo time. There is a cacio and pepe recipe within my book. It's very didactic. 
it's not super classic though since I'm using French Conte cheese instead of Italian Pecorino cheese. <laughs> Just so me. It's a fully detailed step-by-step uh, -step recipe with all the measurements, all the proportions, everything. If you want to get this book, I'll post a link in the description box down below. Wow. Okay, let's cook those pasta. As soon as you will master cacio e pepe, just by adding one chale or chick bacon to it, or just bacon, you can make pasta a la gricia. Not a super famous dish, but still an amazing one. And by adding tomatoes to that dish, you're gonna end up with a matriciana. Pasta a la matriciana, le bucatini a la matriciana. Like a super iconic Roman dish. And then, from the same pasta la gricia, which comes from cacio e pepe, and just by adding eggs, you can make pasta carbonara. <laughs> this is just for drama purposes. Do you understand now the power of cacio e pepe? The impact it's gonna have on your life. Culinary life, okay? Still, life. It's very smooth, it's very silky. Mm. And yet, the peachy, since they have um, such a wide section, they still are very al dente. It's so creamy. It's, it's, it's hard to believe that there is no butter or cream or oil involved. I could basically drink that. I need to go back to making recipes more often. Now I guess, as French as it might sound, I've got two complaints about this dish. I mean, I'm French after all, so I gotta bitch about something. First, with the method I've been showing you, which is very, very close to the traditional method, it still is super easy to mess up this dish. That's a shame. I know it's the tradition, I'm just stating that there might be a more efficient way to make this sauce. Ooh, the comment section is gonna be a wild place. And the second complaint is, I think we can make this recipe just a bit better, easy, slowly, uh, just by using those ingredients in different ways and in a different order in the recipe. Oh la la, I just said I can make cacio e pepe better. Alex is messing up with the Italian tradition. And that was the end of our comment section. Rest in peace. Come on, Italian people, you know I love you, okay? And you also know, if you've been following this channel for, for, for a bit, that I do not bitch for free. I'm definitely gonna man up in this recipe. I'm gonna face those challenges and you, you're gonna be the judge to see if I can make this recipe a tad better. And of course, if that's not the case, I will just face my judgment. It's gonna be a nightmare. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, then please give this video a big thumbs up, like it, and share that everywhere. Spread this like butter. If you decide to make that dish, you will have my everlasting support. There is definitely a before and an after, and my word on it, you will be a better cook after mastering this pasta dish. Take care, bye-bye, salut.